Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Let's start with that trigger warning, shall we? Can you recite it with me at this point? Even though Sobcast the Podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, we'll be talking about some not-so-good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and WebMD. Uh, WebMD, just like the mention of it, it makes me nervous. <laughs> if you are watching this on YouTube... You might notice the distraction behind me. I went down a rabbit hole of peel and stick removable wallpaper when I moved into this apartment and I spent days putting this yellow like fake vintage wallpaper up and they were not kidding when they said it was removable because it went ahead and removed itself. And, uh... I wish I could say I could save it, but it's currently a giant ball of, like, sticky wrapping paper. (sighs) It's fine. It feels like a metaphor somehow. I don't know. But uh, please forgive the mess. Maybe I will replace it with... uh, I have a different wallpaper that has flamingos all over it. Do we like? Does Does that sound good? Does that sound like it'd be good for your mental health? Like, I like, I think the flamingos would be good for my mental health, but the the application of the flamingos doesn't sound so good for my mental health. So we'll see how that works out. Today's episode is going to be about my journey with medication, brain medication. It's really important to me to talk about this as much as I can, because my medication and it's really important for me to talk about this because I wouldn't have found medication that works for me if other people hadn't been talking about it and talking about their experiences. So let's get into it, shall we? I actually, (laughs) I was feeling a little nervous or something when I was getting ready for this episode. So I decided to format it uh, in a way that sometimes I format uh, journaling, which is that I interview myself. (laughs) It's actually, if you are ever struggling with journaling and you feel like you're getting stuck trying to tell like the entire story of your day and like what you had for lunch and like what color the sky was and just, you know, all those little details. Sometimes writing out like five questions for yourself to address really specific things can help a lot. And if you're like me and you used to really enjoy the essay portions of tests in school, I think you'll really like it. (laughs) This has been your helpful tip of the day. So let's uh, look at these questions that I've written for myself. Christina, what medications are you on currently? And what do they do? Well, Christina, that is an excellent question. Thank you so much for having me. Um, currently I am on Lexapro. I take 10 milligrams every morning and Wellbutrin XL, the, I guess it's like a slow release kind. And I take 150 milligrams of that each morning. So thrilling. I know. Wow. It actually is really exciting when I meet other people who are on that exact combination of medicine though. So what do they do? Well, um, in general, they make it easier for me not to fall into an anxiety spiral or a depression quicksand. Uh, I am still not a doctor, if you can believe it. Uh, 
I keep applying for kind of a you'd think some school like Harvard or something I don't know would have given me like an honorary medical degree by now but no I'm still waiting but from what I gather Lexapro is an SSRI I forgot to write down what SSRI means, but I think one of those S's is for serotonin because basically what it does is it restores the balance of serotonin in the brain. And well, butrin, as I understand it, um, it helps inhibit the reuptake of serotonin. So, uh, I could be wrong. And if I am, then I need I I need an adult. I need a doctor to correct me. I'm always happy to learn more. But basically, Lexapro helps your brain create more serotonin. And well, butrin helps the serotonin stay just a little bit longer in your brain, like neurotransmitters. So more serotonin and the serotonin hangs out a while longer. How'd I do? Cool. From a more personal standpoint, I think that Lexapro has really helped with my anxiety, and Wellbutrin has really helped with my depression. And I heard somebody describe it as, as a bridge. Basically, I used to you know, have something happen to me in daily life and I would immediately fall into an anxiety attack. Like I just was in a constant state of either recovering from anxiety or just like being catapulted into anxiety, which is a bummer. It's really exhausting and I definitely couldn't like enjoy my life. I was constantly looking to the future I was so worried all the time. And when I say that like something in life happened to me or happened around me, I'm talking like little things. I mean, it would be like, I don't know. I ordered a bean and cheese burrito and it didn't have cheese on it. And it, I guess because of my mental state and because I was already so like fraught with these big worries it could just like push me over the edge into I mean the kind of anxiety that would make me cry at work or not be able to sleep at night um a really uh my my thoughts were definitely out of control and what Lexapro did was it widened the gap between things that were happening and my reaction. So don't get me wrong, there are still times where something happens and I certainly do spiral into an anxiety hurricane. However... <laughs> More often, I have almost like this like millisecond longer to decide whether or not it's worth spiraling over. Basically, what Lexapro has done for me is it's created this like millisecond between when something happens and my reaction to it. So back to that bean and cheese burrito, the cheeseless bean and cheese burrito. Um... I experience that and I have this millisecond of like, is this really worth spiraling over? Can't we just take a deep breath or just like accept that there's something we can do about this? And then maybe I go find my own cheese and put it on the bean and cheese burrito or I find a different solution. I definitely still have times where something happens and during that millisecond, the, maybe the tools don't work or I just don't have the mental capacity to avoid it and I can still become really anxious get down that, that scary rabbit hole. 
but it doesn't happen as often and therefore I'm not as anxious that it's going to happen. If that makes sense. It's, it's a weird cycle. So I'm really thankful for Lexapro in that regard. Something I was struggling with when I first uh, started Lexapro was this just super repetitive thought of like, you're not doing enough. You are not doing enough. You're so behind. I mean, I was making videos that would get millions of views and I couldn't even enjoy it because my brain was like, yeah, this was a fluke. And also, you're not, like, riding this wave enough. Like, you should be out there doing something else, something bigger. Like, this is nothing. So many people do this. You're not special. It's just just so mean. It was so mean. And sometimes, honestly, those thoughts got so out of control that I would think of even darker things. And that's, uh, that's not who I am. That's what I kind of uh, realized, and Lexapro helped me be more myself. Wow, I'm having a realization as I'm saying this. Wow. So anyway, (laughs) well, Butrin, on the other hand, I feel like helped me in a really similar way, but with my depression, and... Um, I think in that situation, it kind of raised my, uh, my baseline. So for a few years, my baseline just kind of kept getting pushed lower and lower. So even after a good night's rest, even after a day of taking really good care of myself, even after like a week of taking really good care of myself, eating well, going to therapy, uh, exercising, getting enough sleep, drinking water. I could still just wake up feeling like I didn't want to be a person. Like I just wanted to become part of the bed. So uh, raising that baseline actually helped my tools work better. Like things that I learned in therapy really could keep that darkness away. Again, doesn't solve everything. I I wish I had known that when I started medication. It doesn't just solve everything, but it does give you just a little bit of armor. It's like a It's like being on a river and you're in a canoe and sometimes you're going to hit rocks or choppy water, but medication can maybe be your oar or your anchor or your life vest. I don't know a lot about canoes. I'm really, the image in my head is just of Pocahontas in her canoe. Maybe it's, it's your pet raccoon. I don't, this is, Also, something really important is that it's different for everyone. So please remember, this is just my experience. Um, My next question, uh, my next question to myself, how have they helped you? Oh, I think I just answered that in my, in my little monologue there. (laughs) Wow. Good job. How did growing up in a house with medical professionals affect you? Wow. Good question, me. So my dad is a doctor and my mom is a former nurse and discussions in our house around the dinner table were always, I mean, so interesting, but very medical focused. Uh, It definitely meant that we took health really seriously and that I had kind of a an automatic trust for modern medicine. So if my mom said that I had to take gross grape Dynatap for my cold, I was going to do it because I believed that it would work. It also meant that I had um, trust, kind of automatic trust for other medical professionals. So when a doctor gave me a recommendation, I would take it really seriously. 
when I was a kid and I was going through my first kind of anxiety crisis, which I talked about in my introduction episode, my parents made a really good decision, which was that they used my trust of medicine to kind of create a little bit of a support system for me. They got me vitamin D tablets. No, I'm sorry. They got me vitamin B tablets. And they were, you know, just regular vitamins. But to a kid, uh, they looked like gigantic important pills that were going to cure me. It probably helped me in a placebo way, just that I was taking them. I was like, yeah, this is this is going to cure me or whatever. There is also scientific evidence that vitamin B can help you regulate your mood. In case you're looking for a little vitamin supplement. I took vitamin B every night with dinner. And I had a little pill cutter and it became this kind of, I didn't know it at the time, self-care ritual where cutting the vitamin in half so that I could take both parts, I would take it in yogurt because I was a huge baby about taking the pills, but hey, I did it. It felt like a medical treatment. It felt like I was taking care of something or at the very least putting in the effort to take care of it, which, which helped me. I actually have been taking vitamin B almost like my whole life and it still brings me just a little bit of comfort. There's something kind of funny about vitamin B specifically. I don't know if it's like the agent that the vitamins are in or if it's the actual vitamin or what, but... The vitamin B supplements that I took and take, turn your pee, like neon highlighter yellow, (laughs) which, you know, if you're not ready for it can be a little shocking, but if you are looking for evidence that the supplement that you're taking is working, it can be really helpful. (laughs) At the very least, it'll give you a little bit of a laugh in the bathroom. But uh, yeah, I was at a point where seeing my neon yellow pee was comforting. Wow. So having that background and trusting even like the vitamins is interesting because I did have a lot of resistance to starting antidepressants and we'll get into that. Let's let's look at the next question. If you knew that you were anxious and depressed, why didn't you just get medicine? That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Mhm. Good point. Well, I did know that I was experiencing anxiety and I did know that I had almost like a special ability to be very sad, (laughs) but I actually didn't get diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and depression until I was in my late 20s. So I didn't even think of medication as an option. I tried a lot of other things. I added a lot of other supplements to that vitamin B. At one point, I was driving like 40 minutes to Glendale, California to see this woman named Christy who would do like muscle testing. Have you heard of this? She would basically put um, a little glass jar of something in my hand and then I'd have to raise my arm and she would push against my arm and Something about that would indicate that I was either like having a a negative reaction to the thing in my hand or that I didn't have enough of that thing. Um, She, I'm going to say prescribed, even though I could just buy any of the 
stuff on the internet, uh, she recommended that I be taking mm, like four or five different kinds of pills, like at three to four times a day. That's a lot. <laughs> some of it I think was as simple as like vitamin D or some of it was like, this is a, this is like our version of a happy pill. Like it's like, I don't know, ashwagandha or something. Um, I have a hard time thinking back on it because I was kind of just throwing money at a problem. It felt proactive. Uh, it, it also was related to doing things like trying a sound bath, during which I, I definitely had a panic attack, and trying yoga at a fancy yoga studio because maybe the fact that it's fancier will make me feel better. It did not. Um, I also was in therapy and my therapist did EMDR with me which in itself is kind of a, I'm going to call it, I don't want to call it a medication. I was about to call it a medication, but it's, it's more of an exercise and it was really intense. And I think it did work in some ways, but it wasn't helping me on a daily basis. Also, (laughs) I was self-medicating in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, taking six pills at every meal or whatever. Um, I drank a lot of alcohol, like a lot, like a lot, a lot. Sometimes, sometimes starting much earlier than the, um, traditional five o'clock drinking time starting of the thing. Yes? mm <clears throat> Ooh, it's so interesting when I feel my body, (laughs) like, almost bracing for a disaster. When I talk about when I was drinking uh, to feel better, obviously, drinking in itself is totally fine. In fact, I love it. But drinking specifically to try to make yourself less depressed or less anxious is not sustainable, at least not for me. Um, so I guess I, I thought those things would work better than trying to seek out actual brain medication. The next question is, why were you scared of antidepressants? Aha. So I'm... 27, 28, 26, something, 20 something, I get the diagnosis. If you've been uh, tested for anxiety and depression, then you probably remember the little quizzes that they give you that you have to fill out uh, where I don't, I think it's like a sliding scale of like how bad you feel all the time. And then your doctor adds up all of the numbers and is like, yeah, you're, you're pretty depressed. Congrats. Here's a number to prove it. Um, but until I was, I'm sorry, I didn't consider prescription medication until I was properly or officially diagnosed. And I, 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 I did a boo-boo. Because instead of talking to people who I knew were on medication or um, asking questions, asking my doctor questions, asking my therapist questions, I took it upon myself to look at the internet. What? <laughs> If you are looking for a reason not to do something, the internet will provide. I think I typed in Lexapro on WebMD and it wasn't even like, 
here is how it can help you. It was just like, here's all the bad stuff that could maybe possibly happen if you start taking this medicine. Medicine. Like, <laughs> um, if you look at the side of like a common medicine bottle, like I take Excedrin a lot. If you look at the potential side effects of Excedrin, one of them is liver failure. Which you should take seriously, but also you can't worry about that too much because I, like what, what really, what are the odds that you're going to mistreat Excedrin so badly that you're going to have a liver fa- I don't know. I did not consider that as I was reading these lists of side effects, possible side effects for Lexapro. Some of them included um, feeling worse, which terrified me because I was already feeling pretty bad. Um, Oh, oh, like having trouble being sexually aroused. People reported weight gain and uh, lack of emotion. That really scared me you know, like not being able to feel anything. I didn't, I didn't want to be numb. I just wanted to be able to enjoy things. <laughs> so yeah, it, I scared myself out of it. And it wasn't until I really started talking to my doctor in earnest about my worries that she could give me an actual expert opinion because she sees potentially hundreds of people who are taking antidepressants, like daily, hourly. So she knows a lot more about it than me. And uh, it's kind of silly that I didn't immediately think to ask her about it. But I ended up doing that. Even some of the things that my anxiety brain got into were... uh, I was, I don't know if I read it or if I truly like dreamed this up, but somehow I got the idea that taking antidepressants can lead to Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. And my grandmother had Alzheimer's and she also had taken anti-anxiety medication. And so it just seemed like, well, that has to be it. It's not the fact that Alzheimer's runs in my family and literally her siblings also experienced it. It's, it has, you know, I'm going to take Lexpro and by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have forgotten everything. That was letting my anxiety make decisions for me. (laughs) So, the last thing that I was scared of was being on a medication forever. I was worried that I would start taking it and that it would work and then I'd have to take it forever, which is silly because, I mean, I've been taking birth control for like over a decade, more, way more than a decade. Like, finding a medication that you'll have to beyond forever is actually a blessing because that means it's working. Baby Christina, you're going to be, you're okay. You're okay. So those were some of my fears. I definitely think that the like, I definitely think that like the stigma around taking medicine for anxiety and depression was affecting me. I was worried that starting to take medication would make my anxiety and depression real, like that it would make it an actual real problem that I couldn't just solve by myself. Mm. It was a real problem that I couldn't solve by myself. So yeah, I think I, I, I think I was afraid of being like crazy. And I know I'm not the only one who's ever felt that. I'm rolling my eyes. Let's move on. What made you decide to take the leap? (laughs) Take 
the little leap into the line at Walgreens to pick up my Lexapro. Well, um, la la la. Well, first of all, talking to my doctor in earnest about my fears really helped. Talking to other people who actually take antidepressants really helped because it made it more normal. But weirdly enough, the kicker was that one day I was on YouTube uh, watching YouTubey things and a video made by one of my favorite creators. She's amazing. I've been following her for years and years. Her name is Anna Akana. You should follow her. You should watch her videos are like short films. Like she's amazing. And she casually mentioned that she was on Lexapro. What? Mind blown. I couldn't believe that we could have something in common and that it would be antidepressants. (laughs) But it gave me the confidence to start it. And I realized too that nothing is permanent. So I could take the Lexapro. And if it didn't work, I could eventually stop taking the Lexapro. I heard stories from people that I talked to that they uh, they had had to try different sorts of medicine before they found the perfect thing for them. And Anna Akana had found the perfect thing for her, and it was Lexapro. Like I could ha- I could be just a little bit more like Anna Akana. Like how cool how cool would that be? While all of this was happening all these positive things, it also was becoming increasingly apparent in my day-to-day life that what I was doing on my own was not working. I was having just crushing, like debilitating bouts of like almost mental exhaustion, especially in the mornings. I just... I dreaded, I dreaded things that made me happy. Like, that's how dark it got. And yeah, so that seems like a really good reason to take medication, right? I was sick. (laughs) I was sick. So I started on Lexapro and, um... You know what? I'll get to my journey with Wellbutrin in a little bit. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is, how dramatic about it were you? And by it, I mean starting medication. Well, I was very dramatic about it. (laughs) I really looked at it as a huge turning point. Even if Lexapro wasn't going to be the thing that worked... It was a step toward the thing that was going to work. So I packed a bag and I drove to Palm Springs and I rented a little casita at a fancy house that a really um, nice lawyer person owned uh, on Airbnb. And I made myself a little microwaved (laughs) enchilada and I almost prayed over the pills just like please help me please please help I will never drink again if you just help me and I popped it in my mouth I drank some water I waited I took a shower drank some more water took a little dip in the pool and I felt like myself which was huge. (laughs) I don't know what I was like expecting would happen, what that I would like hulk out or that I would, I don't know, turn into some kind of like cartoon character, like getting hit by an anvil from the sky. 
I don't know. But whatever those worst fears were, they didn't happen, at least, at least not when I took that first pill. It was almost like, (laughs) it was almost like a religious experience. I know that is, that is dramatic, but I wanted it to be dramatic and I wanted my life to change dramatically. So yeah, that's how, that's how dramatic it was. And you know what? That was the day I stopped drinking and I, (laughs) that was the day I stopped self-medicating and I just have trusted that the antidepressants that I'm on will have my back. And if they don't, then I will investigate something else and it will be okay. Good. (laughs) Next question, please. Next question, please. How did you know the meds were working? Ah, Okay, I really like this question. (laughs) Good question, me. Like I said, there wasn't an immediate transformation that was happening. In fact, I didn't know the medication was doing anything for a couple of weeks when, unfortunately, the um, Lexapro made me, like, super anxious. It, like, turned my anxiety up to, like, volume 100. And... Luckily, my doctor had warned me that sometimes this happens before your brain chemicals kind of even out, that you can feel kind of an extreme, and then you'll come back down and and it'll it will be okay. But if it doesn't, we'll figure out something else. So I was not surprised by the sudden anxiety, but it was full body. It was like, I remember I was with my two best friends and I almost couldn't hear their conversation because I could almost like hear my body buzzing. It was like electrified, just full body anxiety. And that's only happened to me a couple other times. Lucky me. Then I got over that. I think it only took, luckily, like a few days and... It wasn't like I woke up one morning and was like, I'm all better now. It was more just like time passed and all of a sudden I realized that I hadn't been late to work because of my anxiety in a month or that I had sent an email without asking someone to look over it for me because I was so anxious that it was going to destroy my career because I was sending an email to someone. Those daily tasks had become easier. And it wasn't like magic. And it wasn't all at once. It was over time. Um, One of my friends told me this just beautiful story, and I think about it all the time, that um, a family member, one of her family members, started taking antidepressants and... He also was like, is this working? Is this working? How do I know when it's working? And then he kind of forgot to keep checking. It just kind of became normal life. And then one day he caught himself singing to himself in the car. And he hadn't been singing to himself in so long because of depression and that was just like a sign that things were getting better. I think that's so cool. I also found that asking people who love me if they thought I was getting better worked really well because my anxiety and depression were affecting them a lot, a lot. As much as that pains for me to admit because I think... um, Whenever you're feeling shitty, even like if you have a stomach bug, like sometimes you can feel this guilt of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe someone is taking the time to help me or 
I hope I don't get the rest of my family sick. Um, but asking them and checking in with them every so often, like, how have you noticed my mental health improving since I started the Lexapro? Oh, that was so helpful. I highly recommend. Eventually, that checking in is what led me to asking for a change in the medication. So I think I'd been on Lexapro for about a year and a half, maybe maybe less, maybe just a year. I had seen my anxiety get so much better that that distance between the event and the reaction was so manageable, but I still went through They were usually about like a week long. I I have no other word to describe it, but uh, just losing myself for a time. I would just be so sad. And because I wasn't drinking anymore or like self-medicating anymore, I would eat a lot of crappy food and like if you know me like I love crappy food I I say crappy and like food that just the only reason you're eating it is because it tastes good not because it's gonna like give you energy or is nutritious or anything like that um but I was eating it past the point of even tasting it I was sleeping like random times during the day, like I would just fall asleep in the middle of the day. I would like not wake up, like just, it was depression. It was, it was depression. And um, when I kind of had a check-in with actually, again, my, my two best friends, they, instead of saying like, we've noticed that you've been really depressed, instead they kind of asked me like, well, do you think that you feel okay? And I remember it was a full moon because we were doing some kind of full moon ritual that I was making everyone do. I just like burst into tears and totally lost it because I realized that I was back in a position where I didn't have control. Oof. So... I went back, talked to my doctor, I talked to a psychiatrist, um, I, I think I had just finished a therapy program, um, it was an occupational therapy program, I'd be happy to talk about that on another episode, um, and what, we as I'm what we I mean this amazing team of professionals helped me realize was that my anxiety was under control and my depression wasn't so we decided to try Wellbutrin because I don't know it works in a different way um still has to do with that serotonin so maybe the two medications could work together to fight crime in my brain I think because of my experience with Lexapro and knowing that it took a while to work, I was much more prepared to be patient for the Wellbutrin. And I I think I didn't even question how it was working until months later. And that actually worked really well for me because at that point, things were a lot better. <laughs> And I actually had made, uh, I think because I was feeling better, I had made some really positive changes in my life, including like I was going to Pilates class every day, even if it was just stretching, just stretching. The stretching was actually really hard and and wonderful. Um, I was waking up on the early side. I had learned these... um, 
like organizational tools in the occupational therapy, like that helped me realize what I had to do each day, like what was actually important, what should I actually prioritize. And that helped me not get caught up on something like an unimportant email that wasn't actually going to affect anything in the long term. (laughs) Oh boy, emails. They used to be so difficult for me. And I sometimes I do have this sense of pride when I just send an email really quickly. I'm like, oh, look at you go. Look at you go. Not overthinking it. Not crying about it. You're just, you're just doing life. You're just sending emails. Good job. So I hope that answers that question. Um, okay. How has medication become part of your self-care? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So having things that I do every day really helps. And I, I don't know if that's because I'm a Taurus and a Taurus rising. I think I need roots. I need things to depend on. Um... At points, especially over the past year during quarantine, the day just looked like an endless, like, void if I didn't have things to do. So, (laughs) taking medication, I get up first thing in the morning, I drink some water, and I take my Wellbutrin and my Lexapro, and... Even if the rest of the day goes to hell, which I hope it doesn't, but just in case, at least I've done this one thing for myself and for my brain, and that's really huge, and it makes it easier to do other good things for my brain. Right now, because I think because of the breakup and and so many changes in my life, um, I went from having a really regular exercise routine, having a really regular routine of like cooking myself dinner so that like I had kind of the meditation of the cooking and then obviously a delicious nutritious meal to enjoy um drinking even the times I would drink water all of that got kind of messed up and it's okay obviously like there's Nothing can be that constant. <laughs> like you, Things change and you have to adapt. But the one thing that hasn't changed has been that I take my medicine first thing in the morning. And I'm going to let that have a lot of meaning. I'm going to poet the shit out of that. It's good job. Pat on the back. It is an act of self-care every day. So there. (laughs) How has talking about medication changed the way you think about mental health? Uh Uh-huh. Yes, it has. It has changed the way I think about mental health. um, Because there, like the biggest takeaway that I have is that there is no one way to keep your brain healthy. And every brain is different. Which, on one hand, stinks. Because if all brains were the same, then we'd all just be on 10 milligrams of Lexapro and we'd all feel good. And we'd all be able to write really great emails without a single tear shed. But unfortunately, everyone, you know, is very different. But on the bright side, everyone is different. And everyone gets to discover what works best for them. And that, that act of discovery can actually be really empowering. Talking about medication has also opened up just incredible conversations with people. And I'm talking about like close friends, family, but also like random people that I meet in a coffee shop and I only talk to for like, you know, half an hour and then we go on our separate ways 
yes, I do tell people in coffee shops that I'm on medication. (laughs) It's fine. But people have shared with me snippets of their own journey and uh, that they are on medication or they have been on medication. And I can feel this peace settling over both of us because it's just like, oh yeah, this is this is a part of life is figuring out what works best. And it also has made me realize that I really wanted to be able to solve the problem of my mental illness by myself. I thought the way to do that was to look to uh, you know, natural uh, supplements or, you know, breathing, which definitely helps. Those are tools that should not be, like, poo-pooed. But, you know, modern medicine... <laughs> I'm raising a glass to modern medicine because... It might be the difference between a breathing exercise working and a breathing exercise just failing you. And so, yes, nothing solves everything. But finding the perfect combination for you, or at the very least just being open to finding the perfect combination to you, um, I think is like a huge step toward strong mental health. And I know a doctor, so you can trust me. (laughs) So, in conclusion, the end, Finn, that has been my journey up until now with medication specifically. I'm a huge fan. I don't think everyone needs it. If you do need it, I don't think you should be ashamed. If anything... You could be even proud because you're taking this uh, proactive step toward being healthier. If there is anything else that you want me to talk about in terms of medication, I would love, I would love to hear about it. If you have any questions, if you want me to do research. If you want me to talk to a professional, bring someone on here who who maybe did actually get a medical degree or whatever. I'm so happy to do that. Um, like I said, it's so important. It's so important to talk about this. Oops. I have a little bit of an assignment for you. <laughs> I know I'm not the boss of you and I'm not your teacher, but I've decided to assign homework. (laughs) And that is, you should ask someone this coming week, like, what helps your mental health? What is a secret that you have come across that helps your brain? What is something you do every day that helps? Because everyone's answers are really different and you might hear something that you've never thought of before. Or you might find out, or you might find out that someone you know is on medication, and if anything, that'll just make it more normal and more acceptable. And isn't that what this is all about? I think so. <laughs> okay, you have a good week. And if you want to tell me about your discoveries, I'm all ears. I can't wait to hear about it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the Podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right, see you next week. Love you. Bye.